back again tonight we're getting there we're making progress amen it's good to be here thank you guys for being here uh on wednesday night i've been looking forward to getting back i i didn't get to preach much sunday and so i've kind of got preacher's giddiness to be here so uh it's good to be here but i appreciate the lord and all that he's doing around here it's been a good week i hope you've had a good week and uh Looking forward to uh, finishing strong. Amen. Anybody got a prayer request or a praise tonight we need to hear about? Okay, very good. Amen. That's an answer to prayer. Okay. Amen. Amen. I've been keeping up with that a little bit too, so let's be sure and pray for our military folk that's in the path of this. Category 5, is it a 5 now or a 4? Did it back off? I think it was a 5. There's only been 8 
Category 5s in that basin there in the history since they've been keeping records. So that's kind of a big thing. Let's remember those folk and pray for them. Brother Cecil. Face drunk. Okay. Amen. Let's remember that. Okay. Amen. Patsy Jeffers. Be sure and get that name and remember that when we pray. Amen. Nina for salvation. All right. Anybody else? remember that. Amen. Anybody else? All righty. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and just ask to remember uh, all these requests and ask him to, uh, uh, to just intervene. I, I will say uh, before we pray, let's remember our church. Um, man, God's been good to us and he's been blessing and we're seeing some fruit and a lot of things going on around here, a lot more things coming. But in that, I can go ahead and tell you, this week the enemy has been, uh, he's been fighting. And uh, we've been praying hard, and I want you to pray. Pray for our church that, uh, that God will just help us to, uh, he, he tells us in his word, we win because he who began a good work in us, he's going to finish it. And so, uh, but let's lift each other up, lift our church up in prayer, all right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. Uh, thank you for all your goodness, God. What a, what a privilege it is to serve a God that's alive and uh, a God that we can feel, a God um, that we can, uh, uh, when we pray to, we can have confidence that we're praying to a God that knows us and hears us. And uh, we thank you for that. Thank you for your love to us and your mercy. Uh, thank you for the grace of God that we're uh, going to be talking about in a little while. Uh, Lord, we understand tonight. We realize that there's nothing good about any of us. It's all because of grace. And, uh, Father, I pray we'd always keep that in the forefront. And dealing with folk, uh, Father, that we might think maybe they don't deserve it. But, God, if we were a member back, we didn't deserve it either. Uh, it's your unmerited favor. And so thank you for that. Thank you for uh, all the excitement that we've been having around here. Thank you, God, for folks coming to church and, and uh, caring enough about um, God, their soul, that they could come, and and um, I pray you just continue that, Lord. I, that's my prayer uh, tonight. We we ask for forgiveness of our sin, cleansing, anything between our soul and our Savior. We need forgiveness tonight, and so we pray that you would forgive us. Um, and then, Lord, we would lift up the prayer request tonight that we've heard so many across the building. There are folks that are sick in the hospitals. God, there are uh, folks who have gotten bad news recently about some tests. Uh, there are people, God, who are hurting, whether it be physically, or mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Uh, God, we know that there are people that need a touch tonight. And so I'm glad that we have a God that knows all about the needs. Your word tells us to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. And so, uh, God, we are throwing it on you tonight. Uh, we can't do anything. We can't help folk in any way uh, without you and so we pray for your intervention God and for your touch those that are sick uh, we pray for uh, your healing uh, those God that uh, are physically hurting or mentally or whatever it may be God we pray that you would intervene through the power of the Holy Spirit and minister and heal God I pray and restore to them whatever it is if it's health uh, whatever it is um, God, you'd restore it. God, tonight we would absolutely be uh, not fulfilling the Great Commission if we didn't pray uh, for the lost. Those are the ones that are eternally sick. And a lot of them tonight don't even know that they have a disease. And so, uh, God, we pray for them. We pray that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit would go to where they're at right now. 
and uh, just convict them of their sin and that, God, that they would be miserable. We don't pray for peace, but, God, we pray for, uh, for them to be miserable until they uh, accept Christ as their Savior. Father, now uh, we just give this time to you. Help us as we study your word. Uh, open our hearts and our minds tonight to the things of God. Help this, help us uh, to walk and talk and be uh, better Christians. Uh, Lord, we love you tonight because of your love for us. Now, uh, just consecrate this time in our hearts and minds. Help us to understand, God, the word of God as we uh, talk about your grace tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians tonight, chapter number one. And we're going to be looking at a lot of different verses tonight. And, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of a warning, okay? Here's, here's the warning label. Uh, this is very doctrinal tonight, okay? We talked about uh, last Wednesday night, we talked about grace versus performance. And tonight, we're going to switch it up a little bit, and we're going to talk about God's grace in our holiness and sanctification, I think grace is misunderstood sometime, even by seasoned Christians. And, and I don't want us to ha make that mistake tonight. We understand that we're saved by grace through faith, nothing else. It's all because of God's grace. It's not our performance is, is not on trial when it comes to whether or not we get to see Jesus and spend eternity with him. It's based on, solely on, the finished work of Calvary and God's grace nothing plus nothing it's grace plus zero uh, but I do want to talk about uh, his grace God's grace that is in holiness and uh, sanctification so this part of our study uh, is really about the relationship to our holiness and sanctification with God's grace. And I want us to look at the idea that God in grace sees us as perfectly holy in Christ. That is a, uh, believe it or not, that is a staunch doctrinal statement right there, what I just said. And so sometimes when you're dealing with doctrine, people... <gasps> Oh, can yawn and get kind of bored with it. But I promise you there is an end to the means. And I think it's important that we deal with it. Uh, God in his grace sends his Holy Spirit to create in you and me uh, a brand new heart. And not only does he create a brand new heart, but the Bible tells us that he writes his law on our hearts. And when that happens... That changes yours and mine's basic character traits, if you will. When God writes his law on our heart. See, this is why, and I'll get to the reading of the scripture in just a minute, but this is why our brothers and sisters in some other denominations do not understand uh, eternal salvation or once saved, always saved. Are you following me? And when we talk about once saved, always saved, we have to be very careful uh, in dealing with folks who don't believe it or don't understand it. But this kind of sums it up right here. Uh, the only way I can be saved and in grace or saved for all eternity, it's not based on anything that I have done, can do. I never, listen, I had nothing to do with my salvation other than accepting Jesus, and I can do nothing to keep it. Say amen right there. Nothing, as a matter of fact, I can't even keep my car keys. Can I get a witness? I lose them. Uh, and so I can't keep, my salvation but if God has written his law in my heart on my heart then that changes my basic character traits and then I want us to see that God in his grace continues to work in us through his spirit and the reason he does that to, is so that we can be transformed more and more into the likeness of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. 
uh, before the mud seals of this earth was laid, God knew me and God chose me. Isn't that good? Uh, that, that right there should seal the deal, but we'll go on a little bit. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. Now, my goal tonight in this study is just to show us how we are continually accepted by our Heavenly Father. Always. Uh, why are we accepted by Him? Well, it's because of grace. I don't know about you, and you may not have the same problems that I have, but when I, I told you all a little bit last week, that um, last Wednesday night, that I, I used to think that God was this Father that was waiting on me to mess up so He could take a belt to me. Or that we have a God in heaven with a big hammer and he's waiting for us to mess up so he could drop that hammer on us. Uh, but I don't believe that anymore because of what I'm talking about right now. When I finally got a grasp of grace, uh, then I don't believe that anymore. So um, it's because of grace uh, that, that, uh, that grace that's been poured into our lives through Jesus Christ. Uh, that we are accepted in God the Father. And a lot of times uh, we look at our sinful condition and it seems that, uh, that it exists no matter how hard we try. We find ourselves in a battle over God's acceptance of us. Amen? No matter how hard, that, even the Apostle Paul said, Paul said in Romans, he said, man, those things that I know to do, I don't do them. And the things that I know not to do, those are the things that I do. <laughs> so Paul struggled with this too. And listen, uh, and God knew that. That's why we have this grace. Uh, no matter how hard I try to be good, today I got up, as I do every day, and the first thing I did, even before my feet hit the floor, I looked at my phone and I said, Lord, I'm going to be good today and serve you. And before I got in the car, I had done have to repent. Amen? And then when I got in the car, I really had to repent because I went through about three school zones. <laughs> No matter how hard I try, I still need God's grace. It's so frustrating, isn't it? Because, because we, we kind of think sometimes, we, we look at our sinful condition, like I said, and, and we, we think, man, no matter how hard I try, I'm still in a battle over God. Is he accepting me? And here's the thing, I don't need to be that way, and neither do you. Why? Because I'm accepted in him because of Jesus Christ. No matter what I do, I am already accepted of my daddy. Amen. And man, that helps me as a Christian. So when we start thinking about that a little bit, uh, look at, look at um, Hebrews uh, chapter 10. That's another good area there to kind of sum up uh, what I'm talking about. Here, here's what it says. Then, then he said, Behold, I've come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Look at this. I love that last part. How many times? Once and what? For all. What does that mean? That means for all eternity. We are sanctified. In, that means that if I'm working outside and I'm hammered a big old 16 penny nail in a board and somehow that big 24 ounce uh, serrated edge claw hammer slips off that nail and hits my thumb. I know that's never happened to any of y'all before. And I say, hallelujah. <laughs> now we know that ain't what I say, Amen. I may not say anything, but the words that I'm thinking is probably not, thank you, Jesus. I'm not arrived yet to that point. I hope to someday, no matter what happens, to be there, but I'm not now. And here's the thing. If I do that and I sin in my thought process or even with my mouth, if it weren't for what I'm reading right now, I'd be lost again. And every time I did that, I'd be lost again. And what I, in essence, would be doing is I would be crucifying Christ every single time. But God says, no, 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 no. <laughs> Once and for all. Because we are mm, we're sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus. Once and for all. I'm saved. I, I, 
I had a lady one time, my wife is watching tonight, and she can tell you this. I had a lady one time get so mad at me, and I know that's hard to believe as sweet as I am, but she did. She got mad at me, and she told me, and she called me preacher, so she knew I was a reverend, and she said, preacher, you go to hell. And at first I got mad because I'm a hothead, and my face got red, my ears got red, and then all of a sudden something came over me, and I looked at her, and I remembered this Rome, uh, uh, Hebrews 10.10, 10, and I looked at her, and I said, ma'am, I don't want to disappoint you, but I can't. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because I was sealed by his sacrifice once and for all. You can tell me to go there all you want to, but I cannot. Why? Because I've been saved and sealed. Amen. Because of the grace of God. Do I deserve it? You better believe it. And so do you. And we're awful. We're, we Christians are awful hard on folk. Rather than showing them a little grace, we're a little hard. We need to remember this. God showed it to us once and for all. So I, that's kind of where I want to go tonight and talking about God's grace and holiness and sanctification. The second thing I want you to see is holiness is a gift of God's grace. It is a gift of God's grace. When we consider that God wants us to be perfect, now think about that. We've already said we can't, right? It's impossible. And if you think you can, how can I say this sweetly? You're a liar. <laughs> Amen. There's no way. We can't be perfect, but when we consider that's what God wants us, he wants us to be perfect without blame. It's important that we understand that holiness is a gift of God's grace as much as our salvation experience was. How about that? I didn't say it was as important. I said it was a gift as much as it was. That holiness is, listen, to to live by grace is to live solely by the merit of Jesus Christ. You need to, that's refrigerator material right there. It's solely on his merit. To live by grace is to base my entire relationship with God, including my acceptance and standing with him on my union with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all based on him. To, to live by grace is to recognize that in myself I bring nothing of worth to my relationship with God. Because, listen to this, even my righteousness acts, the Bible says they're like filthy rags in his sight. Think about that. The best that I can do is like filthy rags. The best that I can do, Wow. That means even my best works, they're stained. You know what they're stained with? They're stained with mixed motives and imperfect performance. See, I never truly love God with all my heart, and I never truly love my neighbor with degree or consistency. Aside from God's grace, it is, imp it is God's grace and God's holiness. That's why the, the the Bible tells us, be ye therefore what? Holy. Why? Because I'm holy. That's what God, listen, that's God's standard. Are you getting it, church? God's standard is you're perfect. I'm, everybody has to be perfect. Everybody has to be holy. But we are incapable of being holy. So how do we get there? It's based solely on the Lamb of God. <laughs> that's it. You and I, we're going to make, we, we, are, we, we are so flawed. Ask Vanessa, I say that a thousand times a day. Humans, we are so flawed. We mess up, we make mistakes, we lose our cool, our motives aren't pure. We do so many things. And I have to remind, why do I say that all the time? Because I have to remind myself when people get under my skin, and they do. I have to remind myself they're flawed, just like you, preacher. And they need Jesus just like you, preacher. So you bite your tongue and you love them. Amen? Because they're flawed. Listen, that holiness, though, it's a gift from God. The Bible speaks of both a holiness we already have in Christ before God and a holiness that we, we grow more and more. That's that growing in grace and holiness. The first is the result of the work of Christ. That's what we've been talking about. 
The second is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit that's in us. The first is perfect and complete, and it's ours the moment we trust Christ. Did you know that? The moment we get saved, we, we are made perfect and holy in God's eyes because of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, here's the but, the second is a result of the work of the Holy Spirit. It, it, is, it, is, it, it, it is progressive. That second is incomplete until the day of perfection. When is that? Christ, the, the Bible says, when we see him, we will be like him. But until that day, it is a perfecting grace. I, you know why I'm not perfect now? Because I'm not, I've not seen him. I'm not with him. But every single day, God is perfecting that in me. He's perfecting that holiness. And that's what the Bible talks about. He talks about that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 14. I want you to look you there. This is, and that's the word he used. He uses the word perfected. He said, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are what? Being sanctified it is a it is a progressive work it is a continual this is why you still want to say a bad word when you hit your finger or slam it in the door or somebody cut you off in traffic and that's why when 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 that happens immediately we we fly into that old nature again and we want to just blast them right how come that is preacher if i'm saved and this is how some of my free will baptist friends that i love dearly talk to me if, if you're truly saved, why do you still want to do that? And, I, and my answer is very simple, Hebrews 10, 14, because I am being sanctified, amen? I have not reached sanctification yet, therefore, I, it's a work of the Holy Spirit that I can look at him and go, you guys want to talk about this? I can talk about the Holy Spirit now, right? Why? Because he is perfecting me. It is a perfecting work of God's grace. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. In one aspect of sanctification, we're already holy because of Christ's holiness being imputed into us. It is an imputed holiness because we had imputed sin. Why is it? Who imputed the sin into us? Adam, right? Adam sinned. So when I was born, I was born a sinner because of the imputed sin of Adam. If, if it was imputed sin that ruined me, then it is imputed sin holiness that's going to save me we've been made perfect forever in that sense in another aspect we're being made holy day by day through the work of the holy spirit who is imparting in you and i the life of christ say amen right there we are being so listen and st- when you mess up instead of beating yourself up and just throwing your hands up and say i'm quitting what you need to say is god thank you that I am being sanctified and I'm not supposed to be perfect yet because I've not seen Jesus. Amen? We, we, we Christians, are, we're bad for that. Now, this is not a license for you to sin. Paul said, do I, consent, do I continue in sin that grace may abound? That's what he's saying. Just because I know this, does that give me a, a green light to sin? Then he goes on and says, God forbid. See, you won't, you won't want to sin because God's written his law where... You see how this is kind of tied together now? That's, that's why I don't want to sin. That's why I, I continually want to be made perfect like Christ because God has written his law in my heart that I don't want to sin against him because of the finished work of Calvary. The third thing I want you to see about this is the holiness that we possess in Christ before God. We've already seen that there are two kinds of holiness. There is the holiness we already have in Christ before God, and there is the holiness that we are to grow more and more and more in. And the second aspect of holiness I talked about is progressive. It's incomplete until the day of perfection. And that's kind of what I want to look at, the holiness that we, we possess in Christ before God. And if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30, Here's what the Bible says, but of him you, you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Did you see that? If my righteousness are, 
if it's like filthy rags, then how can I, how can I even talk about righteousness? Well, according to 1 Corinthians here, Jesus has become our righteousness. Isn't that good? <laughs> He's become our holiness. Be you therefore holy because I'm holy. He has become our redemption. We understand that Christ is our righteousness and he is the basis for our justification. You know what that word means, right? You know what justification means. Here's what it means. It means just if I'd never sinned. Because of Christ, when God looks at me, he sees me as perfect. Why? Because I'm justified. It's just like I never sinned in him. Isn't that good? Think about the worst sin you ever, you could ever, don't even think about it. That's terrible. But think about this. God doesn't see it and he doesn't remember it. It's cast in his sea of forgetfulness with a big sign that says no fishing. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm justified in him. I can live in peace. He, he is also our holiness the truth is that all believers are sanctified in Christ even as we are justified in Christ and through that justification we're forgiven and we're declared righteous in the courtroom of God's justice through that perfect holiness that we have in Christ Jesus that's pretty that's pretty interesting isn't it we are perfect and holy because of him tonight through his justification, through the perfect holiness we have in Christ. See, our moral filth is removed and we become fit to enter the presence of an infinity and infinitely holy God. That's how we can, that's why the Bible says you can approach the throne boldly. Amen. We can go before God with boldness. Through justification, we're forgiven. We are declared righteous. Man alive. That's, I love Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 22. Here's what the Bible said. And you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now has he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you, what is that word? Holy and blameless and irreproachable in his sight. Because of his work, he presents us as perfected to God the Father with all my flaws and all my hang-ups. And, and that's why I can lay on the pillow tonight and know that if, if, if this place, if everything blows up tonight, I'll spend eternity forever with God. Why? Because of Christ's perfect work that's in me church that's something that we all ought to we ought to grab a hold of that tonight we ought to go home and shout the victory it ought to put us in a good mood for at least a month amen to understand that God loves us and in his sight we are perfect and he doesn't see our flawed wicked self he sees us as Jesus presents us perfect wow what a God I, also Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 Look here what the Bible says. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. How can we who are, who are not only guilty but just morally filthy be holy? Again, God who knows every motive, every word and every action, how can we approach a holy God? Through Jesus Christ. Fourth and finally, I want to give you this. That grace to grow in holiness we've seen that we have and possess a holiness in Christ that enables us to continually continually come to the throne of God's grace but now we need to look at the holiness that we grow in through God's grace sanctification or holiness in us it begins instantaneously as an act of the Holy Spirit and is carried uh, forward by his continued action in our lives in other words, I, I, I tried to figure out um, how to break that down. And the only way I can really break that down is that it takes a deposit of God's grace every single time that we sin. That's what it's like. It's just a deposit of God's grace. 2 Corinthians um, Chapter 3, verse number 18. If we got that one, yeah, let's go there. But we all 
with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And that scripture explains to us the progressive nature, what I talked about earlier, of our sanctification and holiness. It's the work of the Holy Spirit, but it also involves a response on our part so that we as believers, we're actively involved in the process. God does not bring us into his kingdom then leave us in our own to grow. He continues to work in our life to conform you and I to be more in the likeness of his son. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. The Bible says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You see, God, through God's grace, he creates a new heart in us. Uh, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute because I know this is a whole lot of stuff. But in Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27, he said, I'll give you a new heart. I'll put a new spirit within you. It'll take, he, I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh. I'll give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and you will keep my judgments and do them it's God who puts his own spirit in us wow (laughs) he removes us he gets us out of the way he gets our spirit out of the way because our spirit does not want to follow God's decrees God gives us a growing desire to obey him we don't have an aversion to God's commands You, you know who hates God's commandments those who don't know him amen Guess what? Before I met him, I hated him too. It says you can't steal, you can't kill, you can't can't do this and then you can't do that. It's all a bunch of you can't, you can't, you can't. And I'm a little rebel. If you say you can't, then I'll show you I can. Amen. Because again, I have that in me. But once I met Jesus, all that changed. It gives me pleasure to do the will of him. I want to follow his commandments. That's the difference in knowing him and not knowing him. If you don't want to, if it doesn't give you pleasure to follow him, then you need to check up because you're falling out from grace because you were never in it. That's what the Apostle Paul said anyway. Psalms 40, verse number 8, here's what it says. I delight to do your will, oh my God, and your law is within my heart. Are you following me? How can, how can I believe once saved, always saved? Because what God's written on my heart. Amen. How can, I, how can I defend eternal salvation, Pastor? Because of what God's written on your heart. That's how you can defend it. Romans 7, Look at this one. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. Hallelujah. I delight in his law because he saved me. Listen, we find that his commandments, they're not burdensome. But they're holy and they're righteous and they're good. That's what Romans 7, 12 tells us. They're, they're, they're all at, listen, submission to God's law, it comes out of a love for God and a grateful response to his grace and his holiness and his justification and his sanctification. So when I said I was getting doctrinal, now I'm getting very doctrinal. Once saved, always saved is a absolute grace of God and those who don't get it will never get it. Are you saying they're lost, Reverend? No, I'm not saying they're lost. I'm saying they're going to heaven mad. Amen. (laughs) Ever met people like that? My papa was a staunch free will Baptist and I love him but he and I used to get into the great philosophical discussion sitting in a gravel a pit over eternal salvation and finally one day I said Peppa I love you and you're going to heaven but you're going to be mad when you get there so why aren't you just enjoying it amen I'm glad that I can enjoy living for God I'm not miserable church and you don't have to be You don't have to be miserable. It is, listen, it's God who works and wills in us to to act according to his purpose. Philippians 2, 12 and 13, look here. Here's what this says. It says, 
Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. That was Paul's strong exhortation to the Philippians. And it was based on the confidence that God's spirit was working in them. That's bold statements. What was he doing, preacher? Well, he was an enlightening their understanding of his will. And when we get enlightened to the understanding of his will, here's some good, here's some refrigerator stuff, then we'll be stimulated to do his will. Amen? When we're, if we're enlightened to his will, not only what God's doing, but why God is doing what he's doing, then it, it, it will drive you and I to want to do God's will regardless of what it is. Listen to me. I want to do God's will even if people are mad at me. And by the way, if you do God's will, people will get mad at you. <laughs> but that doesn't make it any less God's will. Amen. It's still his will. Progressive sanctification. Remember that word. It's kind of a big word and it can be a little bit scary. But just to tell you what it involves, it involves our activity activity but it's an activity that we carry out in dependence on the holy spirit Amen. it's him and then finally the christ-like character that we're to grow in i'm not going to read all of this tonight but because it's a long list of christ-like character traits uh we we are to put on uh as ne as well as the negative traits we got to put off a hey, write this down because i want you to go home and read this galatians 5 read the whole chapter that's your homework. Because here's what it tells us that we are to put on love, joy, peace, ouch, patience, ouch, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, ouch, ouch, ouch. Are you following me? That, now you know why you have to continually be perfected. Amen. We have to put that on. Galatians chapter 5, and then you go to Colossians chapter 3. Go home and read that because it doesn't stop with, with th this Christ-like character. We're to have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Then Colossians says you've got to have compassion, humility, kindness, gentleness, forbearance, forgiveness, thankfulness. Ladies, God's talking about your husbands. <laughs> Be sweet to them. We don't get it. No, he's talking to all of us, amen. He's talking to all, this is the Christ-like character that ought to be produced in all of us and that sanctification process that I'm talking about, progressive sanctification. God is working on me to give me more love and joy, more peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. God's having to work on me to give me more compassion and humility and kindness and gentleness and forbearance and forgiveness and thankfulness. That's the Christ-like character that is produced in me in you when we truly get a hold of God's grace and holiness in sanctification. I hope and pray that you'll study this, mull it around in your head a little bit this week, finish out strong this week, and let's put on that Christ-like character together. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for your word and your teaching. Uh, God, it is it's like honey um, straight from the comb. God, it's so sweet to know that I don't have to live perfect because I've been made perfect in, in Christ. So help me, God, not to continually work for that approval. It's already been approved. God, do write your statutes on my heart. Put your commandments on my heart that I would love you more. And give me that Christ-like character as I'm being sanctified through the power of the Holy Spirit. We love you tonight. Thank you for New Haven Baptist Church. God, what a sweet people. Thank you for allowing us to, to be a team together. And I pray you'd help us to reach a lost and dying world for your glory. Now, Father, we love you again. We lift up all of our prayer requests to you tonight. Those mentioned and those that weren't mentioned, you know the need. Father, we give them to you. Now lead, God, and direct. Bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. and amen. You're at liberty to go. Thank you, folks.